Hey everybody, Rebels with that 9 back. Uh, here's the DC-3, C-47, LI-2, whatever I'm going to call it. <laughs> so I coded it twice with Future, and the decals on the, the, the stars there still fill me. Uh, I'm not going to even consider blaming the Future. I'm actually just going to say I'm fairly certain it was the stubbornness of the um, airfix decals. Uh, I really have had problems with them. I've actually used them on a, um, a buffalo, Brewster buffalo, and as soon as I finished all the decals just fell off the kit. So I know how tough these decals are and I'm fairly certain that's the reason why. Um, it's hidden well enough. It looks kind of blotchy, kind of like all of Drab used to do. Uh, so I'll just leave it at that. It's not too bad. I coated it in clear flat just a while ago, and it looks pretty good to me. Um, the window's still fogged up, though. I can't understand that. I thought the future would have protected it, but uh, I guess not. So they fogged up. And the funny thing is that they fogged up. They're actually... You actually see them better. Like... They kind of blended into the fuselage, but now when I stand back, they've kind of got this silvery look to them, and uh, I can see them better. It's really weird. I can't explain it. Um, but it looks good to me, because they're, they're just slightly frosted. And, oh, the other thing I did is I redid the uh, landing gear. If you remember the landing gear, all this in here was solid. And that was just to make it... Um, more strong for people when they're building it, right? So uh, all I did is I cut that off. I kept the back on, but I thinned the legs down quite a bit. I sanded them down. And what I did is I took a um, pin and uh, I put it in the pliers like this and uh, set it in there in about the middle and just bent it down so that they were kind of uh, U-shaped, but they had straight edges and uh, super glued them down there. So now I've got these really wonderful looking landing gear legs. I love them. That's like my favorite part because they, they just they just didn't look right to me. I love the DC-3 and um, landing gear is something that with a lot of DC-3 models they can get wrong really quick. And again, it's a simple $5 snap kit. Uh, I'm not trying to criticize Zvezda for you know not getting it right but it's something quick and simple I could remedy. So now I've got it. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm really thrilled with how this how this bird is looking. So the only thing left to do is paint the uh, landing gear, the wheels and stuff like that. Uh, I gotta glue on the cowling and paint the propellers. And I can toss that out. And I think that's it far as the model goes so yeah here's the propellers and the raised landing gear so for this video I'm gonna show you guys how to do the diorama base and stuff hopefully I'll have enough time to do this and I won't have to split it up so this is that little tin that I showed in the last video and I masked it off because I like the silver base on it and I took some Tamiya primer I primed the top and then spray painted it uh, black so let's See, I think there might have been a bit of bleeding. Yeah, there is just a tiny, tiny bit. The tape, when I when I was uh, painting it, some of the tape just came up. Um, I don't know, green tape does not like corners as much, I've found, in my years of, uh, of building. And I was doing this on a really windy day, so it's super windy out there. I actually sprayed it on and all the paint just blew away. I didn't even get it on the on the model. It was kind of funny. And there we go. Yeah, there's a little bit of bleeding there. That's probably the area I was actually worried about as well. And come on. I used to use green tape all the time on my models and stuff, 
and I still do use it like on on giant surfaces and stuff like that but I will usually always use um, a little bit of um, Tamiya tape or mostly Tamiya tape so I'm just gonna scratch off the paint here and just clean it up a little bit but uh, yeah look how nice that is this nice silver frame so what I want to do now is I have three colors I have Tamiya uh, dark green RAF it's XF81 brown JGSDF XF72 and desert yellow XF 59 okay so uh, can't get it open there we go so let's just stir this up yeah I did stir them but I'm just gonna make sure so what I want to do is kind of paint on the black a uh, bunch of green but in no specific pattern and just do this all over using a nice uh, wide brush here let's kind of connect that And don't worry about it being kind of transparent. It's, you know, you kind of need more layers with acrylic paint, but don't worry about it. Don't worry too much. Don't stress about it. You just want a basic green on there. So, looks like that. And clean off my brush here. So I kind of got this weird camouflage looking here. These are actually the colors I used to paint the, uh, actually both my hurricanes that I've done lately. The Airfix uh, 48 scale and the 1144 scale Zavista. So now I'm going to paint the brown on here. Tamiya has yet to provide me with RAF colors that I, I like. I've said this before, I th I'm sure. So I use these two because they're kind of close. Paint a bunch of brown on here. It's starting to look like um, German Panzer uh, camouflage, isn't it? And don't mind if it goes into the other colors, into the green. That's pretty good. And lastly, the desert yellow. I think this one needs to be stirred up a bit, though. Yeah, it does.
So this paint's a bit thicker. That's because this one was for airbrushing. But uh, the model I was building turned out to be what I would consider the worst model I've ever built, personally. It just did not work with me, and so I never, I never got to airbrush with this paint. I never finished the model. I put it in a box. No, no, it's downstairs. That's right. I have no idea what to do with it. I was going to do a video about it later, which I probably still will do when I get free time. Look at that, there's a camouflage. Now what all this is going to be is it's going to be different uh, dirt when we put on the grass. Because I've done it where I've painted on black and you see through the grass and you can just see black and uh, it looks kind of funny. This way it looks in all these different tones when you see through it. Um, sometimes when I'm doing grasses and stuff like that, I will actually airbrush uh, browns on top of it, different greens, because this is the stuff that I, I have. This is the best stuff. I think they call this flock grass, and basically it's uh, sponge or foam. Um, it's, it's, they grind it up, it's already pre-colored green, and they just grind it up into kind of a powder. Uh, the other kind of grass you can buy is static grass. Now, I was so close to buying static grass one day because I needed it for a project. I actually wanted it for the DR1. But they only had it in huge, huge bottles that I, it would t probably take me 30 years to use. Because um, I don't build dioramas that much. And uh, I, asked, I asked if they had any in back. I was pressed for time and uh, went around the corner and they were... They said they'd go check the back, and they were just chatting with their buddies, and I went, oh, screw this. I'm going. So now we want to cover the entire base. I'm using Elmer's White Glue Clear. Uh, I like this glue a lot. It's... It's good for canopies as well. Um, it takes a while to, to dry though, if you're using it for canopies. Um, but the bond of it is, is pretty good, I've found. So I'm just gonna use my finger and just spread it all around like so. I think I need more glue. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get around the edges because I can clean that a little bit easier. Later. So there it is, it's all shiny and yeet. Luckily this is water soluble, which is another really nice thing. So now what I want to do is I've got my display base. I'm going to pick it up. like this okay flip it over hope I got that on frame okay Let's flip it around again
Okay. I'm just shaking off all the excess. see a little bit of a spot there that I missed and uh, I'll go and patch that up once I've wrapped up the video but when you look at it from the top it's very hard to see and show it on the camera but you can very subtly see the greens and the browns and stuff in there and when you look at it it adds kind of a nice interesting tone to the diorama base so that's how you do that. You can do that for little figures. Uh, works really well for, for that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to clean the, all this up. And uh, I can see a couple areas where I, I should add more. Uh, kind of on here in the bottom. But um, I actually might leave it. Or just probably dunk it in again. It won't. But I want to keep this uh, edge here nice and, and clean. It took me a while to find the bag of this because my dog actually ate the last one. Don't know why. <laughs> Don't know why she decided that, but it came home and her whole muzzle was was green and we thought what the heck did she get into here and running and there's a bag of flock just just everywhere what a dog <laughs> it was pretty funny i have to admit even though, even though i was a little devastated to lose all that all that grass it was like a brand new bag anyways um that's it Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I can see more and more the, the different tans and browns, and it looks really cool. Um, makes it look makes it look more real, you know. You look out in the grass; it's not all green. There's dead grass underneath. There's dirt and patches and stuff like that. And uh, this little guy, I'm not gonna put it in because the grass is drying, but it'll he'll sit like not like that. It'll look really pretty, I think. And uh, that's all there is to it. It's quick and simple. And so save your biscuit tins or watch tins. That's what I make most of these out of. Is whatever ones I can find. But uh, yeah, that's about it. That was pretty fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. Rebels of Cloud Nine. Signing out, and we're almost done this build.